Okay, so the next feature that we're going to add to our app component is going to be a clock. Basically, when the user loads the app component in the browser, I want to show them the current time. And I want that time to update every second. And the only reason that we're going to build out this feature is so that I can show you one more critical detail about use effect. But before we get to building out that feature, there are a few core JavaScript ideas that I need to introduce you to. And they are the set timeout function, the set interval function, and the clear interval function. So if you are familiar with these functions, which exist in regular JavaScript, you can feel free to skip this lesson. And if you are unfamiliar with them or need a bit of review, in this lesson, I'm going to introduce these concepts in isolation. All right. So as you may recall, we have a playground file at the very top of our project. And we created this just as a little scratch pad where we could play around with code that is outside of our actual React components. And we're going to utilize it in this lesson to write the code that we want. So you do not need to follow along because this is just for the sake of example. It doesn't actually affect our React code. So I've opened up this file. If you have anything left over in this file, it's okay to delete it. It was just for the sake of example. And we're just going to run this file by running node followed by playground.mjs in our terminal. The reason, by the way, it's called mjs instead of js is because it allows us to use import export syntax in JavaScript files. It's not going to be relevant here, but that, by the way, is why we gave this file that name originally. Okay, so with that said, let's begin with set timeout. So right here, I'm going to write set timeout. Set timeout is a built-in function. It is top level, which means you can uh, invoke it like so. That you don't need to import anything or set anything up. You can simply import it anywhere where JavaScript is available. And it accepts two arguments. The first is a function, so I'll provide an arrow function. And the second is a duration of time specified in milliseconds. As a reminder, uh, 1,000 milliseconds is equal to one second. So the second argument here represents an amount of time. So let's say I put 3,000 milliseconds, which represents three seconds. And it is the amount of time that we are telling JavaScript to wait before it runs this function that we pass in as our first argument. So set timeout allows us to run code on a delay. It's basically us pausing the program for a certain amount of time and then telling JavaScript to execute a bit of logic. So for example, in here, I can provide a simple console log and I can say hello from set timeout. And when I run this file, notice that nothing will print out automatically, but after three seconds, that time will expire at which point JavaScript will run the specified function and then we'll see the output. So right here, I'm running it. One, two, three, and there we go. We see the output. My, my count was not perfect. Maybe I was speaking a little bit too quickly. But hopefully you understand the idea. Set timeout allows us to run code in a specified amount of time. And that code is represented by the function that we pass in as the first argument. Okay, so that is set timeout. Set interval works very similarly. So it accepts a function as its first argument and an amount of time as its second argument. This time around, I'm going to pass in 1,000. That is 1,000 milliseconds, which represents one second. The difference between set interval and set timeout is that set timeout only runs once and then it is done. In comparison, set interval runs repeatedly. It runs at an interval. So every one second in this case, it's going to run the function that we pass in as the first argument. And there is, by default, no endpoint. So it's actually going to cause our pro program to run forever, indefinitely. So right here, I can do a console log and say something like, hello from set interval. And when we run this program from our command line, every one second, we're going to get that console log because every one second, we're going to run the function that we pass in. More specifically, JavaScript is going to run it for us, but the same idea applies. So set timeout runs once, while set interval runs repeatedly, indefinitely. And the second argument remains the same for both of those functions, 
which is at what duration or at what interval? What is the actual length of time? So in this case, we specify to run the code every one second. Okay, so if we're building something out in our project, and as I mentioned, we're going to be building out a clock, if we want our clock to update every one second, something like this is perfect because every one second, we could, for example, instantiate a JavaScript date object, ask it for the current hours, minutes, and seconds, create a string storing that time, and display it on the screen. And then every time that the second updates, we could update that clock, and the user will see that re-render uh, and see the time changing in front of them every second, or whatever interval we specify. So something like set interval can be super helpful in those scenarios. Another example is whenever you want some kind of operation to run ever so often. So for example, maybe you're building a sports site and you want to make a request to a backend to get the updated sports scores. Or maybe you're writing a finance website and you want to get the latest stock price, right? Maybe you want to do that every 30 seconds so the user doesn't have to press a button every 30 seconds to get the most up-to-date numbers. In those scenarios, something like set interval can be really helpful but you have to be very careful with it because as we can see from our terminal, by default, it will run forever. So how do we turn this functionality off? Well, right now, I'm just gonna press Control C to actually terminate the program, but there is an approach within actual JavaScript, within the code itself. So set interval is going to return an interval object to us. So what we can do is actually save this to a constant or a variable. So right here, I'm gonna save this to a const called my interval. And then below, I'm just gonna console log my interval for you to see. So when I run this, you can see that the uh, interval object is printed out. It's this big complex blob of logic right here. And then we continue with the regular interval logic. The key takeaway is that set interval gives us back this interval object. So we can save it to a constant or a variable for use later. And why is that important? That's important because there is a complementary top level JavaScript function called clear interval. And what this function expects is an interval object, just like the one that is returned by set interval. And what clear interval will do is turn that interval off. It's going to turn off that continuous operation and that's gonna prevent it from running forever. Now, the problem with the code right now is if I pass in my interval right here, and I run my program, it's going to run just fine. It's just that nothing will happen. So let's take a second to think about why. Well, we're going to begin an operation. We're going to tell JavaScript that every one second, we want it to run this function. At an interval of every one second, execute this logic. But as soon as we register that interval before one second passes, we automatically clear that interval. So there's nothing left for JavaScript to execute. And then the program ends and we're sent back to our command line. So to actually show you clear interval in action, I'm going to combine it with set timeout. So right here, I'm going to use set timeout, which was the first thing we introduced. And as a reminder, we provide a function and then a length of time. So right here, I'm gonna do 5,000, which is five seconds. And so in here, I'm going to put the code for a clear interval. So to explain what is going on here, we are first going to begin an interval that specifies to JavaScript that every 1,000 milliseconds, or in other words, every one second, it needs to run this function, which will console log this statement. Then we also say that in five seconds, JavaScript should clear the interval above. So in theory, we should see this uh, console log printed maybe about four or five times. It's not necessarily going to be exactly five because there might be a little bit of a race condition and there's also more advanced JavaScript concepts we have to worry about as far as which function gets executed first. But the key takeaway is this logic will run for some time. And then after about five seconds, we're going to clear that interval, which means there's nothing else left to run and the program will conclude at that point. So right here, we're gonna see there is our interval, two, three, four, maybe five, and then we get to four. And then at that point, five seconds pass. So our set timeout function runs once, right? And then we clear the interval and the program is done, right? And that's all you really need to know about these three functions. Set timeout allows us to run a function in a given amount of time. Set interval allows us to run a function at a given interval, which means repeatedly in a certain time frame. And 
for both of those functions, set timeout and set interval. We provide the function as the first argument and the amount of time as the second argument. The only difference between the two is that set interval will run repeatedly while set timeout will only run once, right? And then we also talked about clear interval. Clear inter interval accepts an interval object and it will stop that running execution. It will stop that continuous process that set interval creates. And the only way that we can uh, get this to work is to pass clear interval the interval object, which means when we use set interval, we must save the return value to something like a constant so that we can reference this interval object later in order to pass it to clear interval. Clear interval needs the reference to an original interval object in order to be able to turn it off within JavaScript's internal logic, all right? So with that knowledge in our hands now, we can move on to the next lesson where I'm going to show you how we're going to apply this logic to render a clock within our app component. So that's all there is to cover in this lesson, and I will see you in the next one.